This getting started video is um, about showing how to set up your desktop if you're using existing Office software on your computer. Now we've got the same user Bob from a previous video, but this time we've turned off his ability to have Office Pro Plus as part of his application. So we are going to look at the PC and Mac section, and now we have a section called Desktop Setup. And you would use this section if you're using Office 2010 or Office 2007. We'll run the setup and it will do some things. It'll check your computer to see what updates need to be installed and applied. And it will apply those and will also um, create some connections to SharePoint and Office 365. So let's just run that now. Initially what it will do is download an application to run. I won't make you wait while things are downloading and, and running. I'll just pause the recording and stop occasionally. So you run this application that is downloading and you'll be asked to log in two or three times to confirm that you are Bob or your username when you're setting up your desktop. So the desktop setup application now loads up and expects a sign-in. So while that's beginning to load, let's just copy this username again. Again, your name is going to be much easier to type in. This is just for demonstration purposes. And at this point you can say tick to keep me signed in. So initially it's going to check your system, looking for updates, and this might take a little while, so I'll pause for now. So Office 365 Desktop Setup has detected that there are five updates that are required, and some of them are necessary for authenticating against Office 365, so that's the online sign-in assistant. There's also an update required for Outlook 2010, the social connector, an update for OneNote, and an update for the social connector. Uh, might add too that if you are using Office 2010 that you'll need to get the latest service pack um, as you'll have to do the same for Outlook or Office 2007. And there are three applications that will need to be configured to set up Office 365. So let's start that process. And you will get given that prompt because I'm running Outlook. Let's close that. And again, this process can take a little while, so answering yes to some of those questions of elevating permissions. So you need to accept the license agreement. And you can expand that arrow to see the progress of what's happening. If you have to install a service pack for either Office 2007 or 2010, um, you will need to download it and the update may take um, 30 minutes to 50 minutes to install. So that will add a bit more time, but it is a necessary step. If you're up to date with your service packs as this computer is, then you won't be prompted to do so. But this desktop setup program will detect whether or not you're running the most current Office service pack and tell you to download it if it's required. If your edition of Office doesn't have some of the programs listed here, such as Microsoft Link or OneNote, then they, they won't be in the, the list to be updated. Microsoft Link is included as part of the Office 365 service in all the enterprise suites, and if you are purchasing the online plans separately, SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, Link Online, and um, Link is part of your subscription, then you'll also have the option to install Link. 
almost complete. So some of these updates that have downloaded are installing now. And applications are being configured in the background. One application that, that will probably need m your assistance and a bit of a few manual steps will be Outlook, particularly if you are connected with Outlook to another mailbox or exchange account uh, that you'll need to manually guide it through connecting to your new Office 365 mailbox and we'll cover that in another video. So the desktop setup has com completed its process and as we see here Microsoft Outlook does need to have some steps required so you can click into the link there to launch and see some resources about how to complete that step but we will cover that in another video shortly it's also a good idea to enable your computer to receive updates automatically using Microsoft Update and you can enable that if you haven't done so already so thanks for watching we'll cover the next video shortly